What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. So I was going to start the season with a nice and easy episode, maybe a creature feature or a new research episode, but then I thought, nah. As some of you may have seen previously, I did a little preview of Shark Week 2021 where I told you which shows you had to watch and which ones were best to avoid. If you missed that, you can click this link here and give it a watch. Anyway, in that episode, I told you that the Jackass Shark Week special was definitely one to avoid because it was going to be terrible for the image of sharks. So true to my word, I didn't watch the show, but it's been really, really hard to not see that shark bite clip that's been doing the rounds online. So today we're going to take a little look at exactly what happened that led to Shark Week's second ever shark bite in nearly 30 years of programming. Again, guys, this is your reminder to not recreate anything that happens in the following clips. Sharks are apex predators and you really don't want to mess around with them. Also, the following clips do contain blood and gore. So if you're squeamish, you should probably switch off now. Okay, here we go. So fellas, how'd this one go? poopy has got bit real bad, man. Oh, um, wait, what? <laughs> Hang on, I gotta pause this. What do they call him? Poopies. <laughs> he can't be called poopies. Surely he can't be called poopies. <laughs> no, this is a serious shark scientist episode. <laughs> It's called poopies. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> right, let's have a look at what happened. So you can see here, we've got a wakeboard ramp set up right behind this section of sharks. They're all looking pretty worked up. So you can tell they've 100% baited that section of water, probably with a little bit too much bait. It also looks like it's dusk time-ish. So the sharks at this time are really starting to get a lot more active. Anyway, off he goes on the wakeboard and he completely messes that jump up and just lands straight into the water. Now, what's super interesting here is that you can see the shark there, which looks to be a Caribbean reef shark. I think it's pretty much facing in the opposite direction, but as soon as that wakeboard splashes down into the water, it's on him. So that right there is the shark reacting to what it thinks is some more bait that's just been chucked into the water and made a big splash. So it's gone steaming straight over in predator mode. Sharks are actually pretty fast learners and those sharks there have realized that food is gonna appear in that area because they've probably been baiting it for a few hours, I imagine. So they're just ready to go. It's also a really great example just showing you how splashing and flailing in the water around sharks is a very bad idea. So from the YouTube vlog he did afterwards, there's like a slowed down clip of the exact moment that reef shark bit his hand. His hand is just sort of out and flailing around and the shark has hardly even touched him. It's literally almost just shaken its head with its mouth open, just right next to his hand. I think what's pretty amazing is that despite there being a load of bait and chum in the water and despite poopies thrashing and splashing around, that shark that's in full blown predator mode has nicked him and then immediately swam away. It has absolutely no interest in following up on that bite because it's realized that that isn't food. His hand here is really losing a lot of blood in the water, which is just crazy to think when you look at that slow down bite, which barely touched him. Caribbean reef sharks aren't the biggest of sharks. They can sort of get from between six to eight foot long. I think the largest one was maybe 10 foot. But the thing about Caribbean reefs is that they're quick in the water, really agile, and don't tend to give off signals about what they're going to do which makes them really unpredictable shark species. Here's his hand after it's all been stitched up and you can really see the extent of the damage there. Steve-O says in the vlog, they pretty much had to reattach two arteries and then deal with a variety of severed tendons in his hand. Pretty grim. So there it is, guys. The jackass boys overbaited the water, did a stupid stunt, and one of them got bitten as a result of it. Looking at it objectively, he's honestly so, so lucky that shark didn't hit anywhere important. Like if it bites him harder, he loses his hand. And then if it bites him on the neck or the thigh, he potentially loses his life. Also, apparently the lead shark scientist on the show is claiming they managed to get usable data from the experiment that they did with the jackass boys. <laughs> what? For all of you out there wondering, nope, this is not how we collect data on sharks out in the field. Just thought I'd make that really, really clear. <laughs> it was an all round stupid stunt that should never have been attempted in the first place. Come on, Shark Week, please let's try and do better next time. For those of you wanting to know what I'd recommend if you were in that situation, there's pretty much nothing you can do by that point. So my best advice is don't do this. <laughs> anyway, that's enough from me, guys. What did you think of the stunt? Pretty stupid idea? 
I want to hear all your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Sharp Bites channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.